Sonia Natalia from University of Cordoba, neighboring country, right? And she's going to speak on the classification of fusion categories. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would like to say I'm very honored and nervous also uh, to give this talk. And uh, thank, uh, I would like to thank very much the organizers for the hospitality during this Congress. So, um, uh, the area of fusion categories uh, is a uh, quite active one in the last years, and in particular because of its uh, many relations with other areas, uh, like uh, topology, uh, sub-factor theories, mathematical physics. Um, so the connections of fusion categories with uh, these other areas will not uh, be the subject of my talk, but uh, rather I would like to present some uh, basic definitions, uh, constructions, and describe some invariants and uh, review some uh, known results and uh, uh, some uh, specific open questions, maybe not all of them. So I will start by the definition, the structure underlying a fusion category is that of a monoidal category, which is a sextuple C uh, with a tensor product um, and other data, uh, more precisely here C is a category. This is a factor is a called the tensor or monoidal tensor product, and we have a distinguished object, the unit object of C. And this tensor product is associative up to a natural isomorphism A, and uh, one is a unit object for this tensor um, product up to uh, natural isomorphisms L and R that are subject to uh, certain commutative diagrams. The first one is um, called the pentagon diagram and um, it concerns uh, the different ways of associating the tensor product uh, of four objects in the category and uh, it requires the commutativity of this pentagon for all objects W, X, Y, and Z. And a similar diagram for the uh, left and right unit constraints, which are the isomorphisms L and R. And R. Uh, we also need uh, to require that C is a so-called rigid monoidal category, which means that every object of the category has a duals, a left dual and a right dual, uh, which are objects of the category. In the case of uh, the left dual, it is endowed with an evaluation map that uh, goes from the tensor product of x star with x to the unit object and a co-evaluation map that goes from the unit object to the tensor product of x tensor, the left dual, which are subject to uh, gain the commutativity of appropriate diagrams Uh, that uh, generalize the duality in the category of finite dimensional vector spaces in that category. So the evaluation is just the usual evaluation map and the co-evaluation map uh, takes the uh, 
the element one in the unit object, which is the base field K, to a sum of dual bases. In and uh, similar uh, axioms are required for the uh, right duality. Then, uh, a, a very simple example, so the category of vector spaces over field K is a monoidal category with a tensor product over the base field and unit object the base field itself, but it is not rigid. Uh, um, however, the category of finite dimensional uh, vector spaces is a rigid monoidal category. And the kind of transformations one is interested in, in between monoidal categories are exactly those that uh, transform uh, uh, the tensor product of one of them into the tensor product of the other. So we have a functor that, and, uh, uh, together with the natural isomorphism between the tensor product of the images of objects and the image of the tensor product and the unit object and its image under the functor, which ob uh, obey appropriate conditions, meaning that actually uh, F also commutes with the associativity and, and unit constraints of the category. So I, I will assume from now on that K is um, an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, or in some cases even that it's the field of complex numbers. A tensor category over the field K is a K-linear abelian rigid monoidal category with a bilinear tensor product such that uh, it is locally finite, so home spaces are finite dimensional, vector spaces over K, and every object has finite legs. It is also required that the unit object is simple and uh, a fusion category over K is a semi-simple finite tensor category. Finite means it is finite as a K-linear abelian category, which can be characterized by the fact of being equivalent to the category of finite dimensional modules over some finite dimensional algebra, in this case, a semi-simple. <sighs> And the problem is uh, to classify si such fusion categories over K up to equivalence of uh, monoidal categories. Um, and the solution is uh, out of reach uh, for the moment. And there are, however, results concerning uh, certain assumptions on the dimension of the category, as will be defined uh, later on, or uh, on the rank, which is the number of simple objects up to isomorphisms. Others concern fusion rules of the category that uh, I will talk uh, later. and. Uh, other conditions, but uh, very few general results are known uh, at the moment. One example where fusion categories, uh, one can uh, classify them, is that of pointed fusion categories. So a fusion category is called pointed if every simple object is so-called invertible which means that uh, the tensor product with uh, a simple object and its dual is actually isomorphic to the unit object. So these are uh, classified by finite groups and uh, three co-cycles, uh, and the category, uh, relevant category is the following. If we take G a finite group and omega a three co-cycle on G, which is a function uh, satisfying this uh, well-known equation, then uh, 
C of uh, G omega is the category of finite dimensional G graded vector spaces. And uh, we take the tensor product. Uh, here is the tensor product over the base field, K, with the um, uh, canonical uh, G grading. And the associativity constraint is given by the uh, three cocycle uh, omega on homogeneous elements, x, y, and z. So the three cocycle condition on omega uh, here is um, what uh, gives the commutativity of the pentagon diagram in the definition of a monoidal category. Other examples coming from finite groups are uh, the category of finite dimensional k-linear representations of G. So uh, that I will denote by rep G, uh, assuming fixed the field K. Here again, the tensor product is the tensor product over the base field, and the unit object is the base field. The dual is the linear dual with the usual uh, action of G. And the associativity and unit constraints are the canonical isomorphism of vector spaces. This category has uh, another feature which uh, is not uh, common to every fusion category or every monoidal category. And uh, we have a natural isomorphism between the tensor product and the opposite tensor product, which is given in this example by the canonical flip of vector spaces. And uh, with this uh, flip isomorphism, it becomes what is called a symmetric monoidal category. So this is a monoidal category endowed with a braiding C, which is a natural isomorphism between the tensor product and the opposite tensor product, which satisfies certain uh, axioms of compatibility with tensor product, um, which are called hexagon axioms, such that the square of the braiding, namely the composition of Cxy with Cyx, is the identity of x tensor y for every object, for all objects x and y of the category. So, as an example, the category of finite dimensional representations of a finite group G is a rigid symmetric uh, fusion category. It's a symmetric fusion category, actually. And uh, the group G can uh, be recovered from this uh, category as the group of uh, monoidal automorphisms of the forgetful functor F to the category of vector spaces. More generally, uh, if we have a finite group G and a central element U of G uh, such that U squared is one, then uh, there is another symmetric fusion category one can associate to the pair GU that I will denote rep of GU. These are the finite dimensional representations of G on super vector spaces where U acts as the parity operator. This is again a symmetric fusion category. And there is um, a very uh, famous and celebrated classification result of the Lean that appears in this form in a paper of 2002. And it's based on previous work of the Lean and Saavedra Rivano. Uh, if K is an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, then Every symmetric fusion category is equivalent to a fusion, a fusion category of this form for certain uh, G and U uh, as uh, described above. Um, uh, 
uh, related results were obtained uh, in the context of C, uh, C star uh, tensor categories by Doblinger and Roberts. So I will. These categories, uh, rep GU, uh, uh, defined here, are called super Tanakian. In the case where U is the unit object of the unit element of G, namely we have the category of finite dimensional representations of G with the flip uh, braiding, braiding given by the flip, then uh, the category is called uh, Tanakian. And they will be important later on. Uh, there are other uh, special class of monoidal category is uh, more general than the symmetric uh, ones, is that of uh, braided monoidal categories. So braided monoidal category is a monoidal category endowed with the braiding, which is defined as before, except that we do not ask any condition on the square of the braiding. It need not be the identity. These categories uh, satisfy the, the braiding satisfies uh, this equation uh, known as the braid equation. Uh, it is related with, uh, so it, uh, in those, it gives rise to uh, representations of the braid groups on n strands on the n tensor power of an object of the category. And it's also uh, known to be equivalent to the so-called Young-Baxter equation. And opposite to the symmetric uh, fusion categories where we require that the square of the braiding were equal to the identity, we uh, have the so-called uh, modular categories, or rather non-degenerate uh, fusion uh, categories. Uh, these are endowed with the braiding where the square of the braiding is uh, non-degenerate in an appropriate sense. So modular uh, just means an additional structure to that uh, which is called um, a ribbon structure that I will not discuss in this talk, but uh, which are very important in many applications of fusion categories. For instance, to, uh, they give rise to, uh, after the work of Brzezitichin and Turayev, to invariance of uh, three manifolds and they are uh, very important in uh, work related to quantum computation. Uh, in particular, uh, every monoidal category uh, gives rise uh, to a braided monoidal category um, denoted C of C, which is the Trinfeld center of C. And uh, it is endowed with the canonical and uh, monoidal factor to C. Uh, some examples of uh, tensor categories, and in particular of fusion categories. So suppose H is a, a Hopf algebra over a field K. That means it is uh, an algebra which is also a co-algebra with a co-multiplication delta and the co-unit epsilon, and uh, assume uh, it has an invertible antipode, so that the antipode I here denoted S is an isomorphism, or an alti algebra isomorphism of H. Then the category uh, rep H of finite dimensional representations of H is a rigid monoidal category. In particular, uh, so the category of uh, representations of a group is a, a special case of this. 
where the tensor product is again tensor product over the base field. The unit is the base field with action uh, given by the co-unit. And the duals are again the linear duals with the action induced by the antipode or its inverse. So if H is se semi-simple, find a dimensional Hopf algebra over K, then this category is a fusion category. And uh, this example can be generalized uh, in several directions. For instance, uh, letting H to be, instead of a Hopf algebra, a quasi-Hopf algebra, in the sense introduced by Greenfield, or a weak Hopf algebra, uh, or a more generally Hopf monads uh, as uh, studied, introduced by Bruguier, Mirelissier, and uh, etc. And the uh, theorem of uh, Hayashi and Ostrich states that every fusion category, or more generally, every finite semi-simple tensor category, so-called multifusion category, is equivalent to the category of finite dimensional representations of uh, some finite dimensional semi-simple weak Hopf algebra. Uh, then, uh, now, the problem, if we have a Hopf algebra, then uh, the forgetful factor is uh, um, a monoidal factor to the category of vector spaces. And in fact, uh, this characterizes the fusion categories of the form uh, rep H, for H, a Hopf algebra. Uh, however, the uh, problem of distinguishing the Hopf algebra up to isomorphism does not correspond to distinguishing the tensor categories up to monoidal equivalence, but the equivalences of monoidal categories corresponds to a twist equivalence of the Hopf algebras. Uh, this is also a, a notion introduced by Greenfield. This is also true for quasi hopf algebras. The twist of uh, H is H as an algebra, but one modifies the co-multiplication by conjugating by the invertible element J. Uh, now I would like to talk about some uh, important uh, notions and invariants uh, that I related to the study of uh, tensor categories and in particular of fusion categories. One of them is that of uh, their module categories. So a right module category over uh, C, suppose C is a fusion category, is a finite, semi-simple, k-linear abelian category M endowed with an action of C. In this case, right action, so it's a function from M cross C to C, which is associative and uh, unitary in um, natural sense. And then uh, it is an important problem to uh, classify for a given fusion category all its uh, module categories up to equivalence of module categories. It is uh, like for studying uh, groups when uh, it is important to understand its representations. So in this sense, they are a fundamental invariant. And uh, their classification is known in in few cases. Uh, for every module category, one can consider the category of C 
module and the functors of M, which is a multi-fusion category. And it's a fusion category again if M is assumed to be indecomposable. So it's not, it does not decompose as a direct sum of uh, module categories. So uh, if A is an indecomposable algebra, an example of a module category is given by the category of uh, modules over A. And in this case, the category of end of factors is equivalent to the category of A by modules in C, which is a fusion category with tensor product over A. And the fusion categories are called Morita equivalent if the one of them is equivalent to the opposite of the module end of factors of the other one. There is a theorem of Ettingov, Nikshik, and Ostrick that characterizes Morita equivalence in terms of braided equivalence of the Adrenville centers. So this is also an important problem to classify fusion categories up to Morita equivalence. And another, an invariant of a fusion category is its uh, fusion rules. So um, let G of C be the Grothendieck ring of C. And uh, let us denote by uh, ear of C the, isom the set of isomorphism classes of simple objects of C. Then uh, the Grothendieck group is a ring with a multiplication induced by the tensor product. And for every pair of irreducible of, of simple objects, the product X of the class of X times the class of Y decomposes as a sum of um, a simple uh, the classes of simple objects theta with a certain multiplicity, which is given by the dimension of the home space. Then. Um, the collection of uh, all integers, these are non-negative integers n, z, x, y, are called the fusion rules of, of the category, and they determine the structure of the Grothendieck ring. The frobenius peron dimension of a simple object is the frobenius peron eigenvalue of uh, the matrix n, c, x, y, where C and Y run over the, the simple objects. And the frobenius peron dimension of C is the sum of the squares of the frobenius peron dimensions of simple objects. So uh, these uh, Grothendieck rings have the structure uh, are rings with a special structure are called uh, fusion rings. And uh, they have a distinguished basis where the structure contents are non-negative integers. And uh, it is uh, also an interesting uh, problem to determine, given a fusion ring, whether it has any categorification, namely when it is the the Grothendieck ring of some fusion category, and in particular uh, to classify uh, exactly what categories. Mm. Uh, result known as Ognian rigidity, which is due to Ettingov, Nietzsche, and Ostrick, and it appears in a paper of 2005 in Annals of Mathematics says that up to equivalence, there is a finite number of fusion categories with a given Grothendieck ring. Uh, so, um, another uh, result that uh, 
was proved by uh, Tingovnik, Chikanovstvik, uh, is the following. So we first noticed that the frobenius peron dimension of every object in a fusion category is an uh, algebraic integer. And uh, they showed that, in fact, every fusion category can be defined of a, over an algebraic number field. They also proved that the frobenius peron dimensions are, in fact, uh, cyclotomic integers. And uh, Morrison and Snyder proved in a paper of 2012 that some examples of fusion categories cannot be defined over a cyclotomic field. And the examples they gave arise from uh, the theory of subfactors. Uh, an example, uh, a very famous example of uh, classification of fusion categories that is, is due to Tambara and Yamagami, who classified fusion categories which have the following fusion rules. They are called Tam Tambara Yamagami fusion categories. They have simple objects parameterized by a finite group G plus an additional object with fusion rules determined by the product of G and the additional relation that uh, X tensor X is the sum of elements of the field. And these categories has, have dimension twice the order of G. And Tambara and Yamagami proved that uh, in order that a fusion category with these fusion rules exist, the group G uh, must be a billion. And the fusion categories are classified in that case by non degenerate symmetric bilinear forms and square roots of the order of G. Uh, and a very nice result on the possibilities of the values that the Frobenius Peron dimension of uh, objects in a fusion category can take is the following due to Caligari, Morrison, Snyder. So in the interval 2 and 76 over 33, the Frobenius uh, Peron dimension of an object in a fusion category can only equal one of these numbers uh, that are written here. Uh, moreover, in that paper, they uh, provided examples realizing all these possibilities, and some of them are, in fact, due to off streak. Uh, in particular, well, a, a related uh, question to the uh, result of uh, Tingov, Nikshik, and Ostrich. Uh, stated be before, uh, uh, there was a question of Ostrick in a paper of 2003 when he asked if there are ma finitely many equivalence classes of fusion categories with a given uh, rank, so with a given number of simple objects up to isomorphism. And in that paper, he in fact uh, classified fusion categories of rank 2 with two simple objects, the unit one and another one. Uh, some, uh, this question is open, uh, still as far as I know, and some affirmative answers were given, uh, well, recently in a important uh, work of Bruyard, Ng, Rowell, and Wang that established the conjecture for modular categories. In that case, this had been conjectured by Wang previously. And also, Ettingov, Nikshik, and Ostrich had proved that for fusion categories with integer Frobenius-Peron dimension. 
So, uh, some examples uh, uh, of how to construct fusion categories from smaller ones is given by some extension theories. This uh, generalizes the extensions of finite dimensional Hopf algebras. So, uh, we have for a Hopf algebra the notion of a normal Hopf subalgebra extending that of a normal subgroup. So it's normally if it is invariant under the adjoint action. Equivalently, the augmentation ideal of K is uh, by ideal. And if K is a normal Hopf subalgebra, this gives rise to a so-called exact sequence of Hopf algebra that uh, allows uh, to reconstruct H in terms of K and the quotient Hopf algebra. Here, H bar denotes the quotient of H modulo uh, the augmentation ideal of, generated by the augmentation ideal of K. So H is called simply if it contains no uh, proper normal Hobbes of algebra, so it cannot be decomposed uh, as an extension of smaller ones. So Andruskiewicz and Müller defined a composition series of H as a sequence of simple Hopf algebras defined inductively. Uh, so first, if H is simple, then H1 is, uh, is H and N is equal to 1. And if not, then the composition series is obtained by uh, joining the composition series of a normal Hopf subalgebra and the corresponding quotient. In this case, the simple Hopf algebras are called the factors of the series. And an analog of Jordan Holder's theorem was established uh, saying that uh, the composition factors are independent uh, of the composition series. So they are uh, isomorphic up to a permutation. And uh, this, uh, there is a problem about this approach to the classification of uh, semi-simple Hopf algebras that uh, very few results about the simple Hopf algebras are known. For instance, uh, it is known that this notion is not categorical by a result uh, with uh, Galindo where uh, some solvable group has uh, the same up to equivalence uh, fusion category of a simple Hopf algebra. And uh, these are the only simple examples up to uh, dimension uh, 60. Then uh, one can extend that definition of uh, exact sequence to uh, tensor categories. Uh, we say that a tensor functor, which is a k-linear exact monoidal functor between tensor categories, is dominant if every object of the category D is a sub-object of the image of an object of C. And uh, one can uh, write kernel of F and define the kernel of F to be the pre-image of the trivial subcategory of D, which is the subcategory, smallest tensor subcategory generated by the unit object that is equivalent to the category of vector finite dimensional vector spaces. And then what does it mean normal? This was uh, defined uh, with in a joint paper with Alain Bruguer. So uh, it's uh, this condition. Every object has a sub-object such that its image is the largest trivial sub-object of f of x. And in the context of fusion categories, it just means that uh, can be uh, characterized by saying that if f of x contains the unit object for some simple object x, then f of x is trivial. And then one can define what an exact sequence of uh, tensor categories is. 
so f must be dominant and normal. f is a full embedding that uh, identifies c prime with the kernel of f. And in that case, it, uh, we have an exact sequence. In this case, uh, the composition gives a tensor factor to the category of vector spaces. So uh, C prime is actually the category of uh, co-modules over some uh, finite dimensional Hopf algebra. This uh, extends the definition of exact sequence of Hopf algebras and uh, it was shown that, at least in the case where C prime is finite, these are classified by so-called uh, normal Hopf monads. So the definition was extended um, later by uh, Ettingoff and Jelaki to the notion of extension with respect to a module category. So here A is a fusion sub uh, tensor subcategory of B and M in an exacting the composable L module category and N of M the category of K linear right exact endofunctors of M and they defined uh, Ettingoff and Jelaki an exact sequence with respect to M is a sequence of tensor functors of this form where F is dominant A is the category mapped to end of M and the factor F is normal in this sense, where the trivial subcategory is replaced by the category end of M. So, uh, a question uh, that I think uh, some questions we think are interesting is uh, if there is some analog of the shortland Helder theorem for finite fusion categories in particular, and uh, if uh, how, uh, what can be said about a simple uh, fusion categories. So uh, very little uh, is known about uh, these uh, two questions, and I think I am already out of time, right? Two more minutes. Uh, so there are, uh, yes, but I think I have, there are other notions of extensions with, uh, uh, of ways to extend a fusion category. And one of them is that of G graded extensions, which uh, generalizes the notion of a G graded ring. ring. And uh, that of an equivariantization, which uh, is related to a, an action of a finite group on the fusion category. That uh, is a special case also of an exact sequence. And uh, uh, this is uh, important, and uh, it's a very important tool in the classification of brain fusion categories. And equivalentization gives rise to a bijective correspondence between braided fusion categories containing a Tanakian subcategory and the so called braided fusion categories, G cross braided fusion categories uh, introduced by Turayev, which are uh, uh, G graded extensions uh, of a category D where G acts by uh, automorphisms, tensor automorphisms on D uh, compatibly, and it's endowed now with the uh, G braiding. So, uh, an, an important invariant regarding the classification of braiding fusion categories is the core, which was introduced in the work of Dreamfeld, Jelaki, Nikshik, and Ostrich, which is the the equivariantization by a maximal Tanakian subcategory. Uh, and they uh, proposed a classification of pointed, weakly anisotropic braided uh, fusion categories. 
And I think, yeah, I will stop here. I think I have no more time. Thank you.